Welcome to Tejano Virtual Events. This session will be overcoming test anxiety by SSSP tutors Kimberly Martinez and Carolina Melendez. This session will be recorded so that you may come back to it later if you need, and so others who may have missed out on today's events will be able to come and watch it. Thank you. So now, at this time, please mute your mics for the best sound experience. Otherwise, the feedback could interfere with information we will be sharing today. Without further ado, I'll pass it on to our presenter so that we may begin. Hi. Can you guys hear me okay? <laughs> Hello, yes, we can. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, so, hello everyone. My name is Carolina Melendez. Hi, and I'm Kimberly Martinez. And um, we are academic tutors at the Student Support Services Program. Um, today, we'll be, we will be talking to you about test anxiety. Um, however, before we begin, we would like you to participate in a little questionnaire that was used in a recent study, um, just to get to know yourself a little bit more. Um, maybe you aren't even aware that you might suffer from test anxiety. So, okay, so please get something to write with and something to write on. It could be a little post-it, a little napkin. Um, and um, the instructions are indicate how often each statement describes you by choosing a number from one to five as outlined below. So there below that you see that never is the number one, rarely is two, sometimes three, often is number four, and always is five. So um, once you're done reading the statements and ranking them, depending on your past testing experiences, um, please add up your score. And once you're done, use the little icon to raise your hand just so we know that you're finished. Um, and you can, you can think of all the testing experiences um, that you've had, or you can focus on one time that you feel like you really struggled. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to unmute yourselves or type your question in the chat. And we'll just give you a minute or so. And again, just once you're done, if you could add up your score and raise your hand, please. If you have any questions, please let us know. Okay, I see a couple of people are finishing up. And again, it could be the one time you feel like you struggled on a test or the general, um, how you've generally felt in when you've had any test throughout your life. Okay, I'll give you guys one more minute.
make sure to add up your score because we will be going over the results in the next slide. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on. And again, I believe the session is being recorded. So if you didn't finish and would like to take the questionnaire, um, you could always refer back to that. Okay, so let's see. All right, so if you scored 10 to 19 points, you don't really suffer from test anxiety. Um, it could be because you know your material really well, you have uh, a good studying, um, you, ha you have good studying habits, or maybe you're just a natural test taker. Good for you. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes it is good to experience maybe a little bit of adrenaline to keep you on your toes. Um, now, if you scored 20 to 35 points, you may you may have experienced some of the symptoms that, will we, that we will be discussing later on, but even then, the amount of test anxiety that you've experienced is healthy. It's a normal amount. Um, now, if you scored over 35 points, you may suffer from a moderate to severe level of anxiety. If so, you may uh, benefit from stopping by our SSSP offices and we could explore different workshops that could help you work on your test anxiety. Okay, so now let's move on to the presentation. Okay, so what is test anxiety? Test anxiety is a type of performance anxiety caused by an evaluative event such as a midterm, a final exam, or a standardized test. So yeah, in a world where your future, whether if it's you know your academic future or uh, you choose a vocational career, pretty much whatever you choose is determined by test scores and grades. So it is only normal to feel some level of anxiety. And I actually have a question for you all. So let me pull it up from the poll. Let me see. OK, so here's a little poll for you all. And just what percentage of students in the US do you think suffer from test anxiety? Just a rough estimate. Okay, so I see a lot of people leaning towards the t the seventy five percent. Okay, a few more seconds. Make sure to get your responses in. And again, if there's no right or wrong, <laughs> so I see that mostly everyone went with the seventy five percent, but the correct answer is 40% actually. So almost half of our student population battles with test anxiety. And that of course um, comes with its negative outcomes, which we will be discussing later on. Um, so there are two different ways in which test anxiety can be viewed. You have state anxiety and trait anxiety. State anxiety, means that symptoms are triggered only by the testing event. So only when you have to take a test, you feel the anxiety come on. On the other hand, trait anxiety um, refers to when anxiety is a part of your personality and you experience it on a regular basis, not just when you have to take a test. So um, it might be when you're, you know, you're diagnosed with general anxiety disorder. And people that have trait anxiety have a higher anxiety baseline, which means that they experience test anxiety even more severely than someone that might just experience it on test day. Okay, so next slide. If you battle with test anxiety or any type of anxiety for that matter, 
I think it's really important to understand what is going on inside our body in order to try and fix it. So on this slide, I'm, I'll be introducing you to the anxiety center of the brain, which is the amygdala. And it's that purple, tiny almond shaped structure, um, which is responsible for deciding whether the situation you are in is dangerous or not. Um, so if you feel like, you know, the anxiety is coming on before you're going to take a test, it's your amygdala. That's the little, that's the little part of your uh, of your brain that's to blame. Um, now here, I have a simplified explanation of how the amygdala lets your body know that you're in danger. So let's say you find yourself in an anxiety-inducing event or a threat, uh, you know, a threatful situation, which in this case, it would be you have a midterm coming up. Um, so once the amygdala decides that you are in a, in a dangerous situation, it communicates with the rest of the brain to, um, it basically orders it to release stress hormones into your blood. And the blood takes it to all the organs that act up whenever you're feeling anxious. So the hormones activate your sympathetic nervous system, which is known as your fight or flight response. So it's with, you know, whether you freeze up in fear or you run away from it. Um, and this is when you experience the symptoms that are associated with test anxiety. So if you've ever had your mind go blank before an exam or you feel like you're having an extremely, extremely hard time concentrating and every single noise, even the clock ticking on the wall is making it really hard for you to concentrate, that's your amygdala. The amygdala kind of clouds your frontal lobe of the brain and your, front, your frontal lobe is the part that's responsible for logical thinking or rational thinking. So that's why when you go into an exam and you kind of forget everything that you know, that's your amygdala. <laughs> it's kind of your own body betraying you in a way. Um, so now we'll be going over the, some of the symptoms for um, test anxiety and I'll be handing it over to Kim. Thank you, Carol. Yes, so as Garo was saying, um, who knew such a small, small uh, part of our brain can have so many effects on us, right? Here are a little bit more of these symptoms Carolina was talking about. Uh, the brain fog, right? These are cognitive uh, difficulty, concentrating negative thoughts um, and comparing ourselves to others. Some of the physical symptoms we feel are the heart palpitations, you know, when you feel like your heart is racing, like that shortness of breath, nausea, uh, you're shaking, sweating, and even your stomach can start to ache. Uh, emotional symptoms, fear, anger, frustration, hopelessness, and uh, lower self-esteem can all uh, be affected while having test anxiety and um Overall, can just you can have all these symptoms, you know, happening at the same time combined. Um, and so, I wanted to ask you all, what are the most common emotional physical symptoms you experience uh, when you're anxious before a test? So go ahead and, you know, just kind of put what you're anxious about if. Um, the response is not there. You can always click other or type it in the chat. If you feel free to share. I'll give it a minute. So I see a lot of us, you know, a couple of us have rapid heartbeat. I know that happens to me. Okay, yeah, so fear and heartbeat, uh, rapid heartbeat are a very common. Thank you for sharing with us. So now, um, impact of test anxiety, like I mentioned before, that lower self-esteem and maybe talking yourself down, right, the less motivation, saying that you can't do something. Um, maybe you had other things going on and you 
didn't prepare yourself as well and this is why um, now you have test anxiety or even like procrastinating um, before an exam, maybe not studying as much, studying the day before um, can all lead to test anxiety. So the causes of test anxiety, uh, like I mentioned, a uh, poor test testing history can really, you know, put us down. Lack of preparation, fear of failure, and unrealistic expectations. So these combined or alone can create that anxious feeling. Um, and then we'll be going over a little bit more on how reducing this can help. So let me okay so tips for reducing the anxiety so before a test improve your study skills so like i said procrastination can have a huge impact on how you feel the day of the test right so avoid this try studying maybe you know we all have different studying habits and everything uh, works different for all of us but maybe like a week before the test create a study plan um just a realistic study schedule for you focus on problem areas and test yourself. So if you're struggling more on one topic than another, maybe put a little bit of more time into that topic. Uh, practice problems, practice problems, and practice problems. Those are definitely super helpful um, when preparing for any type of exam. Um, also exposure and desensitization. So uh, stimulate exam conditions, and if possible, take time practice exams. So um, taking pra practice exams also near or in a similar environment um, as you're taking the actual test can help reduce nervousness um, because it kind of like tricks your brain that you're taking the actual test, but, but you're not, you're just doing a practice exam. So when the day comes when you take that, you know, real exam, then you'll maybe feel less nervous since you've already been in that environment. Also, um, creating a study planner and scheduling out when you're going to be studying, um, having the exam date on there, whether it be a physical planner or a digital planner, I find both are very helpful. And also take a break, take care of yourself, exercise, get a good night's sleep prior to the exam date. Um, eat something nutritious and avoid caffeine. I know that that's hard because I myself have even done it where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to take this energy drink and just study the night away. But that is not always the best thing to do because then you could be restless the next day on your actual exam. So try avoiding this. Um, practice relaxation strategies. Find the one that fits for you. And of course, ask for help if you're struggling, you know, with a material. If you see that even after studying and reading and practicing, you're still struggling, you know, come to us, come to tutoring, um, talk to your professor, your advisor, or see a professional counselor. So now Carolina will be talking to us a little bit more about um, the relaxation techniques. Yes, so, um... I just wanted to add on a little bit to what Kim was talking about earlier about, um, you know, it's okay to ask for help. Sometimes you might not even know that you have some type of learning, um, uh, learning disability. So it's good to seek out help. And again, SSSP is here to help you. Um, now, I'm not sure if this happens to you all when you're feeling anxious before an exam, but when I feel myself getting anxious, I start noticing my heart, my heart rate speeding up, my stomach gets into knots, and thinking about this, like my symptoms only makes everything worse. So yeah, every, everything just gets worse. Um, so that's why we have these relaxation techniques. So relaxation techniques help you push through those physical symptoms and kind of bring you back to your surroundings. Um, no, they might not cure your anxiety, but they help you accept it. They help you see it as something that's not dangerous. It helps your brain understand that the, that the situation is not dangerous. And um, the techniques help you focus on what you have to do. 
they help you focus on getting through your exam. Um, so these are a few of the relaxation techniques that we picked out, but you have to keep in mind that there are tons more out there and you have to, it's, it's a matter of trial and error um, in order to find the right one for you because something that works for me might not work for Kim, right? Um, and I think there's a lot of, I think it's a misconception, but it's really important to practice these techniques daily, even when you're not feeling anxious. Um, because it's like training your brain into reaching that re relaxation state. You have to think of it like a marathon. You don't show up the day of the race, you know, with no prior training um, and expect to come out alive. <laughs> um, it's the same thing with your brain. You have to practice reaching that relaxation state so that when the test anxiety comes, you can get there easily and you can alleviate your symptoms. And really practicing, practicing them daily only takes up like three to five minutes out of your whole day. So, you know, instead of looking at your phone or scrolling through social media, you can use that time to practice one of these relaxation techniques. Um, so now I'll be uh, going over them. And while I do so, feel free to do the techniques as we go. Um, you know, get yourself in a comfortable position just so you can start practicing them. Okay, so let's begin with the first one. The first one is called belly breathing. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but whenever you're stressed, you may start breathing a little bit faster or hyperventilating. And you feel your chest kind of rises and falls at a faster rate than usual. Um, so researchers have noticed that adults are chest breathers. We breathe using our chest. and I'm not sure if any of you have noticed, but what happens when babies or kids sleep? If you look at them while they're sleeping, while they're in their you know, deep state of relaxation with no exams to worry about, they breathe with their bellies. You can see their bellies kind of go up and down, up and down. Um, so that's why researchers believe that the no breathing with your belly is the normal way to breathe because it, if you want to go into the science of it, it stimulates the cranial nerve that lowers your heart, your heart rate, your blood pressure, and all of that consequently lowers your anxiety. Um, so for belly breathing, you want to find a comfortable position, whether it is sitting down or laying down, and you're going to place one hand on your chest and the other one on your belly. And this is just to be more mindful about your breathing pattern. So you're going to watch your breath as you inhale and exhale. Breathe in slowly through your nose, letting your belly rise. But the hand on your chest should not move. So you want the hand on your chest to be still while the hand on your belly kind of moves up and down like you're blowing up a balloon. Um, so yeah, you inhale and you exhale slowly through your mouth and tighten your abdomen as you do so. And you want to continue doing this until you feel like you're relaxed. Um, and think of belly breathing as the foundation for all of the relaxation techniques. So all of these relaxation techniques, which are called um, deep breathing exercises, they want you to use your belly to breathe. So they want to have that, that deep, deep breaths. Okay, so. Same thing, the, the next technique that we'll be talking about is called box breathing. So box breathing consists of deep breathing as you follow the outline of a box and count to four in each step. Um, you want to count because, because counting distracts your mind from the stressful situation you may be finding yourself in and that eventually calms you down. So. You want, again, to find a comfortable position and follow the outline of the box. So you could start on that um, top right corner. And as you trace down the outline of the box, you inhale for four seconds 
and then the other out um, the other line of the square you hold your breath for four seconds and then again four seconds as you exhale and go up the box and then again you hold for uh, for four seconds and you want to repeat the cycle three to four times or as many times as you need until you feel that you're relaxed and at first if it might feel like four seconds is a little bit too much um, so you can start practicing with two seconds or three seconds and eventually increase your way through until you reach four seconds. Now we have five, four, three, two, one grounding. And I feel like this is probably one of the most common techniques that you see out there. I've seen it a lot on social media. Um, so this technique helps ground you. It brings you back to your surroundings and away from your anxious thoughts. So again, you want to begin with some belly breathing and start to pay attention to your senses. So you want to find five things that you can see and they could be the most simple things like, um, I don't know, the tables, the chairs, the pencils, anything that you can see. Same thing for things you can touch, three things you can hear, and the three things you can hear, again, it can be as simple as hearing the clock ticking on the wall or the AC blowing through, anything. Uh, two things you can smell, again, it could be your own perfume or the Lysol that, we, you know, we just sprayed in the, in the lab. And one thing you can taste, um, you might still be tasting your lunch from a few minutes ago. Um, just thinking about um, what's around you helps you come back to your reality, away from your um, anxiety. Now, um, another technique that we have is called EFT tapping. And um, so this technique roots from Chinese acupuncture and it focuses on the different points in your body and applying pressure to them because they believe that certain points improve the flow of energy. Um, so here you would find, you identify the issue. In our case, it would be, I have a test coming up. So you create a statement as you tap the side of your hand. And I, there's a little arrow on the lady in the, the cartoon. So you would start tapping the side of your hand and you come up with your statement. And we have a little um, sample here. So even though I have what your problem is, so I would say even though I have an exam in the next hour, I accept myself and how I feel. So you're accepting that you're anxious. You, I think it's worse if you ignore your anxiety. If you think, oh, no, I'm not anxious. That's not it. I think that only makes it worse. So you accept yourself and you have to work through how you're feeling. So once you have your statement, you repeat the statement as you tap each point five times and you work your way up, down. So you would start with the top of your head, your eyebrow, then the side of the eye, under the eyes, under the nose, your chin, your collarbone, your, the side of your hand, and your underarm. And again, you could do this as many times as you need to until you feel relaxed. And once you do it a couple of times, you can reassess how you feel. And if you feel like you're good, then you're set. You can stop. Um, so now I have a question for you guys. So let me get this started. OK, so which relaxation technique will you be trying out on your own time? And again, there's more out there, but we couldn't possibly fit all of them into our presentation. And um, I personally, I personally really like the box breathing. I feel like that's the one I've been practicing with the most. And I find it really helpful. I even use it like before I go to sleep and it, it really relaxes me. Okay, so very good. I see that a lot of you went with the box breathing and with the five, four, three, two, one grounding.
Perfect. So now, aside from these, we also have your, um, your more common relaxation techniques, right? And these are the ones that we see being talked about more regularly. So there's meditation, which is an art in itself. Um, so that's why some people resort to guided meditation. And basically, you, um, you can find a video or an app that guides you so you can reach that meditation state. I know there's some apps out there that help you with that. Um, I know two of them. One of them is called Calm, and the other one is called Headspace. And they're both pretty good. So I, I really recommend trying that if you can't focus when you're meditating on your own. And there's also yoga and stretching. Um, but whatever it is that you choose, make sure that you do it regularly. Um, not just in your time of need. So not just when you're about to take the exam and you're freaking out. Um, yeah, so now I'll be passing it over to Kim so she can um, tell you guys about what to do when you're actually in the exam. Thank you so much, Caro. So tips for reducing anxiety during the exam, right? So obviously, it is best to practice all of these um, techniques and things we're telling you guys uh, be prior to the exam, but also it's important to know what to do on the actual day when you're having that anxiety. Um, so first of all, be on time, not late, but not too early either. So I would suggest maybe like 15 minutes earlier, um, maybe not half an hour early because you don't want to just be in that environment where, you know, you're already feeling anxious and then you're there already and um, you still have time. Like that's going to happen. So maybe even 15, 10 minutes early, just so you're there, you're prepared um, and you're not running late, obviously. And then also use the relaxation techniques that Caro just talked about. Uh, these are very helpful just in that uh, particular moment. They're pretty quick. Um, I think in five minutes, you know, you can do them. And just before like you're outside, maybe you're reviewing some notes or maybe you're just sitting down and you can uh, use these to help you relax before the exam. And also, once you get the exam, make sure you're reading all the instructions and questions carefully. So if you have to double, you know, check the instructions, maybe there's something you don't understand and, you know, your professor can help you in that and just understanding the instructions, then do so. Um, and also just reread questions carefully. I know sometimes when we're feeling anxious, when we're nervous, we might miss something and it might be like, oh my gosh, I did a silly mistake. Um, so just make sure you're rereading those questions really carefully. Uh, and if you don't know an answer uh, to a question, then just make an educated guess. Um, if maybe you know that two answers are for sure not the response for that question, then uh, you can cross those out and then reread the other responses and see which one um, is closest you know, to what the question is asking. Um, and lastly, accept the fact that, you know, feeling anxious is okay, like feeling some sort of anxiousness means you care for this exam or even a presentation if, you know, I know some classes have maybe not a final exam or a midterm, but they have a really important presentation and you can still feel anxious before this, but it's okay to feel it uh, to some extent, obviously, where it doesn't interfere with like how you're going to perform. Uh, so just accept that feeling and it's okay. It'll be all right. And now I want to ask you all, based, you know, on our presentation and even maybe personal experiences, um, what advice would you give someone struggling with test anxiety? Uh, you can go ahead and write this in the chat. Um, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and tell us. Uh, but yeah, I'll give you guys couple of minutes to share with us if you're comfortable sharing um, what advice you'd give someone struggling with test anxiety. And to sort of get the, you know, the ball rolling, 
Um, yeah, thank you, Patricia. So come to tutoring. We can help you. Um, and I also want to say, trust your gut. You know, when you're stuck in between two answers and you go with one question initially, I mean, when you go with one answer initially, but then you go back and change it, usually that you, you might have switched your answer to the wrong one. So just trust your gut. You know the material. Yes, definitely, Carla, yes. So take things one step at a time and try some breathing exercises. I definitely can resonate with the taking one step at a time, you know, try not to like rush yourself or anything, just one step at a time and everything will be all right. <laughs> so thank you for sharing, Carla. Oh, and yes, we do have a SSSP has a test anxiety workshop. So if you ever, you know, want to take that before an exam, feel free to stop by and ask us and we're more than happy to help you with that. And um, like Kim mentioned earlier, test anxiety, sometimes it does arise from not preparing well. And here at SSSP, we also have um, a workshop that goes over creating good study habits. So we can we can do that for you too. Yes, thank you, Patricia. So drink lots of water and go to the restroom before your exam. <laughs> Anybody else who would like to share some advice? Or if you have any questions, feel free to let us know too. You can type them in the chat or you can unmute yourself. I can definitely say from personal experience, um, before an exam, if I'm feeling anxious, I talk about it like with my friends um, and we kind of all just calm each other down and really give each other like affirmations that we're going to do well and that, you know, we've studied enough. And so even talking about it with someone else and sharing that how you're feeling can can really help. So if there are not any other questions. Um, or comments. I want to thank you all for listening to our presentation and for, you know, being here with us today and participating. Um, remember to come visit our office if you do need further assistance. If, you know, you want to take that uh, test anxiety workshop, we have other work workshops as well that can help you with this test anxiety and can connect collectively, you know, make you a better student. Um, if you have any advising questions, also we have great advisors um, and student assistants that can help you. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, Carolina. We thank wanna you. take a moment and thank uh, you two and SSSP for y'all's wonderful presentation today. There was Lots of advice um, given today that I think is going to really help some students. I'd like to thank the audience for coming and sharing their Friday with us. And uh, before we let you go, I'd like to invite you to next week's session. So for October 20th, for Happy Math Hour, for Math 1314, we'll be going over the exam two review. For Math 1324, we'll be going over systems of equations. And for the one o'clock session, we'll be going over degree plans with Debbie Santana and Mary Fabella. And um, yeah, <laughs> thanks again to SSSP, and we hope you all have a wonderful weekend.